Okay, so as you can see, these first line of code, uh, the first lines are just importing uh, specific libraries for certain components that we're going to be using in this code. What is your program all about, though? Uh, we're creating, uh, we actually created a star uh, from using graphics, and we changed the background, and we changed the uh, radius of the circle, so then there would be various colors in this circle. Uh, we'll show a picture. Uh, that, that was what we came up with. So those are concentric, uh, what, triangles? Yes, they're, well, they're actually, yes, they are. And they're uh, revolved around this circle right here that we created. Okay. Okay, so um, if we go back to the code, uh, for the first one, public graphics new, uh, this part right here is setting the, uh, the Windows title bar, the background color, and its dimensions. And the super drawing 2D shapes is the title of this, of this uh, specific of the title bar. What is the purpose of the keyword super? Uh, because it's using the super class of uh, the, the entire program. The constructor of the super class? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then for, uh, lastly, this set visible true is to uh, display all of these components. If this was false, it wouldn't show what we had, program what we had written beforehand. Okay. And then for public void paint, uh, super paint is used when you want the super classes implementations of paint to be executed. The X points and the Y points are setting the coordinates for setting the location of the endpoints of this shape. The graphics 2D are for calling the super classes paint method. The general path right here is to uh, create a star from a series of points. So after we plotted these points right here, uh, this line of code is telling the program to actually uh, connect these points so then the, it would create a star and lastly the star move to is to set the initial coordinates of the general path so this is what it was, where it will start and then it will uh, join up these points to make the, our, our image okay for the first for loop or statement that sets the counter uh, of the star to one and if the x coordinate length is less than one, the counter will add one, as you can see right here. The plus plus uh, stands for adding one. Uh, this will continue to occur uh, to draw the physical points of the star, but it doesn't actually draw it, the star itself. Um, Where does the star get drawn? It, it'll be later. Here's just setting the like the coordinate points to where it would be. Oh, okay. But oh, it, it doesn't the fill... The location of the vertices? Yes. Okay. Um, but it doesn't actually fill the color. Though. Okay. Um, and then, uh, star close path, um, it just cl it uh, closes the actual shape. Um, and then G2D translate, 200, um, comma 200, are where it creates the origin. Um, in this case, the origin is like the center of the of the image, um, and for the x and y coordinates. So you're saying that um, if I have, if you like have a an arbitrary canvas, uh, the center of this circle, which is made up of all of these triangles, is going to be 200 pixels down and 200 pixels to the right of the upper left corner of that arbitrary window. Yes. Uh, not necessarily arbitrarily, it just depends on the size. Because if, if, since it's 400 to 400, the center would be 200, 200. But if you change this to 600 to 600, your center would be 300, 300. Okay, explain that again, but use, use the mouse so that people that are looking right, at the so presentation... For, so for the set size, we decided to create the size of the canvas, 400 to 400. Right. And then... Uh, in order, the center has to be, if you think of a coordinate plane, the center of that specific uh, y and x coordinate would be 200, 200. So it so would be it, exactly half, right? Yes, that's why we wanted it, that's why we placed it at 200, 200, so it would be right at the center. Okay, so you're, I see, so you're saying up there, so you, I like that, if that number were 600, 600, then the number down would there 300, would be 300, 300. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. And then 
Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. All right. Cool. All right. And then for the next uh, for loop, the integer uh, count is set equal to eight. Um, and the next command asks or tells the program that uh, the count is less than or equal to two hundred, and to increment by one. Um, this system of commands is for rotating around the origin, keeping the same shape and same radius uh, for the origin, just in a different location every time, hence the uh, count plus plus. Uh, the G2 dot rotate is for uh, turning the actual shape, and math dot pi is uh, known as the rational number 3.14. Um, and it's divided by 60 to show the number of times. For example, if you were to change this to, let's say, 3, we, uh, resize, it. resize the window. No, like the window's open, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, when you actually opened it up, resize the window. And then you see um, it only comes up six times, but then if you put 60, then it would um, go 120 times, and that's the original image that you saw before. <coughs> um, interesting. So, let's go to the 60. Okay. Um, for the G2D uh, set color, um, and it allows you to choose certain colors. And the next three commands, these three right over here, um, they're identical. And they, and the reason why they have integer math dot random times uh, two fifty six is because it's the commands for choosing uh, any random color, uh, and these fit the entire spectrum. Um, yeah, those are RGB values. Mm -hmm. And remember the R value, red, right? goes anywhere from 0 to 255, the green value goes anywhere from 0 to 255, and the blue value goes anywhere from 0 to 255. So how do you generate a random integer from 0 to 255? You multiply math out random by 256, but then you cast it as an int, which is what you've done there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then what I said, um, that it covers the entire spectrum, what I mean by this is 256 is the highest value for a specific color. RGB stands for red, green, blue. For example, if you tell the computer to draw something uh, 256, comma, 0, comma, 0, it'll interpret the image um, or color as red. Green would be 0, comma, 256, comma, 0. And blue would be 0, comma, 0, comma, 256. The reason why you need this series of, um, of the same command, these same commands, is because you need to know the certain portion for red certain portion for green, and certain portion for blue. And G2 uh, dot fill star um, fills the shape with previously assigned colors. And just the last um, public static void main sets the old graphics new. Um, <coughs> application with the new um, with new graphics new. Uh, basically it allows you to open uh, the program you got to compile it, close compile it, okay. and resize the window. Oh, wait. Um, below the two arrows, there's a pile. Void main, right? There you go. Uh, resize that window. Resize that window. Anyone have any questions or comments about the code, guys? 
always wondered why it actually changes colors whenever you whenever you resize. Yeah, it's really interesting, right? right? Because you're not resetting the whole program; you're just resizing the window. Why is it? It changes the color. It changes the window size, and then it changes the um, it changes the window size as the uh, program while it's in for like a new window, basically. Oh, okay. Well, so when you well, uh, yeah, that, I I think what's happening good good. Uh, I think what's happening is every time you resize a window, it's it's generating a new instance yeah. of that. It runs class. that again, right? Well, it's it's creating a new instance of it. And then since he's using random values for RGB, that's that's what's giving you the impression that the colors are changing and that the wheel is so called moving. Right? That's pretty yeah. cool. So. Okay. Very good. Um excellent, excellent presentation. Okay, hit Alt P for me, please.